Hey guys, um, I was just going to quickly film um, my process of wrapping my 20 ounce um, skinny sublimation tumblers. They're the straight ones. Um, I, let's see, these I've already gotten prepped and ready to, to get wrapped, but here's one of my, I haven't even opened this one yet, so let me just show you. So I just take it out of the box. Take out a bubble wrap, take the top off, and then for good measure, because I've had these actually like kind of burn on the bottom of these and I couldn't get them off, I always just take this little kind of metal sticker off, even though it's got a coating on it, almost like you do sublimation keychains and stuff, so I'm not exactly sure what the purpose of it is, or if I took that off, if it wouldn't burn, but I'm not gonna risk wasting a tumbler until I know that kind of thing for sure. So that's what I do. And then I take some alcohol on a paper towel, which of course, here we go. I'm just on a paper towel. Clean it up. You know, I'm not really doing it all the way here, but clean it up real good. Let it sit and kind of dry, and then I just wipe it down again just to kind of finish off getting it dry, and then boom, it's ready to roll. And then I get all this stuff just going out of my way. So I do, um, I just kind of took some designs that I bought on Etsy and, um, just slapped them on a bleach effect background on top of, I believe most of these are Etsy too, the backgrounds. Slapped them on there. Hopefully they'll look okay. Um, for me, I've been doing, um, let's see, my design is, I do mine on, I print mine via Photoshop, but I do my designs 9.26 wide and 8.2 height. Um, and that seems to be working for me. And once they come out, of course you would need to mirror them. But once they come out, I trim off both sides and then the bottom. And then I leave that little, I leave that little bit on the top there. And that part will end up coming off, but not quite this second. So, I'm just going to show you how I wrap one of these. And then I will, I do like to use the shrink wrap. So far, it's done me pretty good. Um, you know, that's completely up to you. I can put a link below of what, what, what kind I have. I got it off Amazon. And when I first started this, and people were like, oh, I don't buy stuff off Amazon. But actually, I've had some pretty good luck with these. Um, shrink wrap sleeves. All right, so let's see. I didn't really clean that one, so I'm gonna. You just take one of one of your tumblers, and I do it up right there. And so then I I get it all the way to the bottom, so that it's flush against the bottom of my on my table. And that's when I'm going to take it and just kind of squeeze from the back side to squeeze all the loose stuff up. And if you got it straight, when you go to look, if you can see here, I'm trying to say, um, you can see here, my pinks are kind of matching up on the seam. So I know I got it straight. Here goes my little dude. I'm trying to record a tutorial here, buddy. Hello. They can't see you, but you can say hi. Is it live? Uh, no. Oh. So anyway, I'm just going to get me a piece of tape ready there. Sorry, I got distracted with my little dude. Okay, so once again, bottom, wrap it around, pulling out all the extra slack from all the way around it. And then I pull the top over. And then I secure that piece of tape. So now that you look, 
I don't know how easy that is to see, but I, that's my seam right there. It comes together on the colors. So the whole thing should be matched up. Now, now's where I continue to go ahead and get some strips all the way around it. Sometimes I put the strip here and it kind of helps pull them together, but you just do the same thing. You just kind of pull from the back up towards the seam together to get all the slack out and then you just slide that over. Buddy, what are you doing? Well, you didn't have to come in here. I have my door shut for a reason. Because you were Xboxing it and I didn't want the noise. Uh, what, what is that? What are you going on to? What is that video going on to? I don't know. I thought about maybe uploading it to YouTube. I'm not sure yet. Oh, uh, you could send it to me. I could put it on YouTube. I can put it on YouTube for myself. Wait, can I pop something back? I don't know, son. Oh, and if you don't have a tape dispenser like this for your heat tape. Oh, by the way, this is heat tape um, that I'm using to wrap. So I'm going to go again here. And here comes my other child. It's like you can't, they haven't bothered me until the second I started doing this. Okay. He actually went downstairs. Okay, so. Stick like I wanted it to. Let's get that piece pulled on. What's that? Where's the water bottles at? What? Where do all the water bottles go? I don't know what water bottles you're talking about. Um, the ones that were on the bottom. I don't know, Steve. Buy the cup. Yeah, I was just borrowing it for my wine. Why put wine in it? Because I was drinking wine. It's a kids' drink. It's my kids' cup. All right, so now I've got enough on the seams to make sure that it's all accurate. It matches up there. Everything looks good there. And if you can see on my bottom, it's just like barely, barely coming over at the bottom, like. You want it like that. You don't want all the extra overhang because then it starts bunching up and then you get the ghosting and you know the white around the bottom. So it's just barely there and you just leave it like that. Now I've never used this big fat tape before but I'm gonna try it today just to get me now I'm just gonna tape a Tape the seam. I start in the middle. And don't forget, you always need to pull your tape tight. So in this case, I am kind of guiding it, but pulling it tight at the same time so that it holds everything more solid, more, more solid and helps prevent possible ghosting on your seams, helps your seams match up better. You just want everything nice, neat, and tight on this. Well, of course, I pulled that up. That's all right. So, once again, folding that tight. Okay, so once I got that on there and I kind of smooth it out a little bit, I'm going to trim that extra off there in a few minutes. Before I get it. No, it's okay, buddy. I got it between me. I got a process here I gotta do. Okay, so I got that. Now, in this case, I'm gonna try to wrap it with a, the big tape. And now I'm gonna go the small tape on this. Nah. Well, decisions, thinking. decisions. I'll try it with the big tape because I've never done it with the big tape. So. I don't know what they would say in the comments. No. So now. Row, row. Come on now. So I just pull off a big piece of the tape and I just start where my seam is and I go up to where the top of the cup is and line up the tape with the top of the cup. Don't go over. And now 
I tightly pull. Might have been a mistake doing this big tape for my first go. I want to fix this. Leave it alone. Might have been a mistake doing this on my first go. Um, for the big tape, it I'm not used to having to handle it and keep it from getting not straight there. Anyway, all right, so I've got one big piece of tape going all the way around. I'm gonna smooth it down. And I'm gonna do the same thing to the bottom. Oh. Same thing starting at the seam and you're gonna go down just to where the paper the bottom of the cup and the paper is like you don't want to overlap the paper so that it makes the tape go down to the bottom of the stick to the bottom of the cup you don't want that you want to keep it on the paper Wait, that's a cup come on buddy that's a cup that's a tumbler oh, I, thought, like, I thought it was um vinyl no buddy this is what sublimation it's just like your soccer cup or your your game cup over here whatever what have they seen it he wants y'all to see his cup that I made him. I'm borrowing it for wine right now because I just grabbed it downstairs. It was clean. I cleaned it. Mm. So now I've got that part done. This is what it looks like. And so when you look, the bottom's good. Oh, just kidding. I need to trim off this extra tape that's hanging over. Just be careful you don't get it to where it cuts off the paper and then it makes it too short. So I just cut that even. And on the top now, you're gonna notice that it's hanging over maybe a quarter of an inch or so. I use, I actually these are Cricut scissors just cause they're the most precise cutting ones I have. And you're gonna wanna go and cut around the rim to cut the excess off, leaving just a slight bit of overhang. Just be careful not to get Get it too short because when that happens you're going to end up having the ghosting and having missing parts of images missing and it's just not gonna work out for you i have been there i have done that i have got the cup in my pile of oopsies, oopsies. all right so there's that So I use, <clears throat> I just happen to have this heat gun already. That's what I use for the shrink wrapping. So I just take a towel. I'm just kind of lay it right here like that. That's my sublimating towel there. Sorry, I got paint on my fingers here, excuse me. So, I got all this done. Kind of smooth your tape back out a little bit. All set. Okay, now, here's one of the sleeves that I bought off of. Actually, I got these on Amazon you know, for the 20 ounce tumblers. And they don't have any. They don't have the perforations or whatever that help you tear them easier, blah, blah, blah. But that's no big deal. When I get to the end, I just take these little scissors and snip just a little part off where I can take it. And usually I can take it and pull downwards and it spirals the whole thing off in one piece. Now that's usually, no promises on that. I've got uh, my heat. My heat glove here. Of course, this is the one I think that I... Nope, no, this is the okay one. One of them, I pulled it off and it turned it inside out and it made it a pain in the butt to get it back the way. Oh, I guess that would help if I did this. So you're gonna wanna pull it apart. Well, so I got it put there and use that as blowing it like I did my gloves at work. on in to where you got about the same amount 
don't know if you can see the standing out there as you do on the bottom. All right. So now I may get a little loud and you won't be able to hear me because I'm going to use this um, heat gun. And also, this heat gun tends to make my lights flicker a little bit. So just a heads up on that. You don't want it too hot. You don't want it too cold. Um, if it's too cold, it'll take forever. You won't be able to smooth it out like you want. And if it's too hot, it will end up getting too hot and you'll end up with holes in, in your shrink wrap and you'll either make the cup not work out or you will have to read the shrink wrap. So, I usually start in the middle, about like this. I'm just kind of getting, kind of get it going like this. And then just kind of make my way around. It's ready to be put to the side. And I don't want to be like you, be a cracker. You do. So, if you can see, it's. That's the only reason there's those ridges is because there is ridges in the tape that's right there. But I mean, it's it's on there really good. Let me take the tape. Okay, I'm gonna stop this video and get my other ones wrapped, and then I will start it again when I go and stick it in my convection oven. Okay, I just wanted to document this real quick before I got the other ones shrink wrapped. Okay, here's the first one that I did. Um, it was the watermelon one with the summer bobs, and I did the the big tape as the the seam going down the seam, and then around the top and the bottom, and then the small tape pieces to go across. Well, then I take this one, and I think this one is the it's also a summer vibes one, but I think this is the one with the the beach, the beach scene. And um, what I did was I started with the big pieces and I used those to connect the middle. And then I did a long seam with a skinny piece of tape up and down. And then I did the skinny tape on the bottom and the top. And then I came back through and I put a reinforcement skinny tape on both sides. That way it would just kind of cover that. So there's that one. Um, this is the Summer Vibes one that is, I believe it's the blue tie-dye. And um, I just did all skinny tape for this one, um, all the way up and down. And this is the um, F-Bomb Dropping Mom or F-Bomb Mom Tattoos. Pretty eyes and thick thighs. But I did... Um, small tape across and then fat tape down the seam and around so there's that but you see how I had a hard time controlling that to keep it to where it would go on flat I feel like this tape that I bought this thicker tape is a little bit is flimsier than this smaller tape which is that's my big tape and that's a great that was a great investment by the way I meant to show you earlier and then this this is an even better investment because I just put uh, four on there at a time and you turn the wheel and it cuts them into individual pieces like that, right? Perfect, hands-free on that in regards to having a cut stick. You just turn the wheel and it gives you a whole bunch. And then on this, it's the, um, by itself, so you can like pull out long stretches of it and then it, you pull it off on that. And you can say, it's got a safety thing too, where you can detract, um, detract, whatever. Uh, the, the blade part so you don't cut your hand or anything on it. All right, so I'm gonna get these shrink wrapped and then downstairs and I'll start it back. I was just gonna show you real quick. Um, this is, every once in a while I'll do it like this, depends on what time of day it is. Sometimes I'll take it outside. Sometimes I'll do this in the garage. And sometimes I'll do it by my open, two open windows in, in my bedroom, just wherever. And in this case, I'm gonna do it here so that I have the exhaust for my oven. But this is my, um, it's my Oster. It's a French door. So it opens like that. And my tumblers can actually stand up there and I do have a thermometer and that helps a whole lot on quality control so I'll just stick that sucker back there in the back actually I think I'm gonna put it more right here so I can get an accurate temp of what it is right there so what I normally do is to get it preheated I just put it on turbo convection and I just go ahead and do it at um 
400 just to get it get it going and I hit start um, and I will end up doing these tumblers at 375 for five and a half minutes to get my desired outcome but I'm gonna go ahead and let this get preheated and then we'll do two tumblers at a time Okay, so now I'm having preheated and I knocked it back down to 375 because it will go up to 400, especially on the turbo mode, but you have to account for opening the doors and, and whatnot. So I'm just barely over 375 now. So I'm just going to go ahead and open up and carefully put two tumblers in. I don't know which two I'm doing, but got them in. I'm gonna shut the doors and then I'm gonna set my timer for five minutes and 30 seconds and then I'm gonna pull them out and I'll record myself unwrapping them and then I'll put the other ones in. Okay, so it has been five and a half minutes. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab these two tumblers out. I'm gonna use a heat glove and then I use like this, like this. I'm gonna get each of them out. And I forgot to mention, I turned my exhaust fan on to, so that these, um, they say the, the fumes are toxic from this process. So just a heads up on that. So I've got those there. I'm gonna put my other ones in real quick. And I'm gonna set this timer for Minutes. Okay. And now comes the fun part. Try to remember how it's been a minute since I've done this. Okay, so I'm just gonna get this one out of the way. And this is my F bomb mom one. And you can see how the ink is showing through, which that's always a good sign on, on any anything with sublimation. If you can see it through on the other side, that means it's done pretty good. So I just take and I just snip just a little one there and a little one there. And then carefully, since I don't have a glove on, I, I can't get good control with one of those on. I kind of pull it down. And hopefully, well, maybe not. You gotta be real careful if you're gonna use anything pointy, um, trying to get the shrink wrap or the, the sublimation paper off and the tape because you will scratch your tumbler and not even know it. Um, I've done that before. Uh, and especially like on the bottoms and stuff, you'll scratch it real easy, real quick. So, so I'm gonna get this off of here. And they are very, 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 very hot. So just a heads up on that. Leave the paper so I can hurry up and get this shrink wrap off because I find that the cool, uh, the more cool that these tumblers get um, with, this, with the shrink wrap on, the harder it is to get the shrink wrap off as it gets harder. So like right now it's warm, it's a little bit softer and easier to manipulate to do what you want. And this is the Summer Vibes. I believe this is... Well, I'll have, I don't, I don't even know for sure. Make sure you get all that sublimation. I mean, not so much, sorry. The, all that shrink wrap off the top and the bottom because it will stick and it's hard to get off once it kind of cools itself down. Now, I am ready to go ahead and remove my paper. And so I just kind of find where, where my tape kind of meets, which this one I did kind of weird, so. You have to bear with me a minute here. Ah, it was the beach theme one. The summer vibes on the beach. No. Not the, well, this, this wasn't a seamless design, so. And then, 
and get this one off. A seamless design is basically where when you put the ends together, it's like the pattern it never ended. It just keeps running into itself. Um, you have to sometimes look specifically for that. Otherwise, you won't, you know, you won't get it with most backgrounds you get, especially ones if you're going to make it yourself, like add things to it. So sometimes that makes it hard for seams, but sometimes it doesn't because it gives you a little wiggle room to screw up because they don't have to match up perfectly anyway. So, ooh, yeah, that's fine. And now this one was seamless. So I am quite pleased with that. It's kind of hard to tell once I get the other ones out, I will um, sit there and let these cool off and I will do a little spin room and let you look at them. It's kind of hard to tell like on the bottom though, it makes you nervous because it looks like it's ghosted a little bit, but it didn't, that's part of the design because there's white in the tie-dye portion of it or the, I guess that's tie-dye. Okay, so. I use um, Cosmos ink, and um, I either use my Epson Echo Tank, Echo Eco Tank um, 2720, or I have an Epson Workforce 7210 that I put my designs from. Um, so I use the Cosmos ink, and then I use a sub paper, um, the eight and a half by eleven. But I've been using the 120 um, gram ones because it. The paper is a little bit thinner, so it's easier to shape it and get it fitted around your cup or your tumbler a whole lot better than the 125 is. So, I'll do a little paper reveal at the end so we can kind of see how much ink was released. And I have found that with um, a sub, it doesn't release as much as like I'd like for it to. Like I've used Crafting Besties and I absolutely loved the outcome. However, I just had an issues with the Crafting Besties paper um, just getting like ink globs all around the edges of it, no matter what I try on both my printers. And I've read and read and read and I'm not the only one with that issue. So I just kind of gave up on that. Even though I liked it because it was the ink release for me, it just, uh, this didn't work in my printer, but this one's about to go off, so I'm gonna get ready to grab these out. Make sure it's off, it is. No, it looks like I may have stretched it a little thin when putting it on, but that's okay. We'll see how it works. These are gonna be pretty, I hope. All right, same process, super duper hot. It's just the smell of the process itself and it's probably a little bit of shrink wrap stinkage and that's why I do the exhaust fan. Trust me, it could smell a whole lot worse. Oops, hot, hot, hot. Once again, I recommend using the uh, heat gloves because this is super hot. Yeah, it smells bad too, but it smells like money to me. Huh? It smells like poop. Well, it smells like poop. Have you ever smelled a paper plant? Like where they make paper products? It smells like money to me. It stinks up to high heavens, but it, uh. Open the window. No, it's okay, buddy. I've got this going. I'm, I'm done with the this part of it. Okay, I'm gonna come back to that. I'm gonna go ahead and get this shrink wrap off over here. Oops, my bad. Okay, made you jump. <laughs> so one of the big things that have helped me out was one, getting the internal thermometer for the oven itself. 
And then two, um, definitely these heat gloves helped a lot. And this shrink wrap paper helped me a lot. Also, another thing, just watch YouTube videos. Just, you know, just type in, you know, what you're looking like. Put in how to sublimate 20 ounce tumblers. And watch other people's techniques and try things until they work for you. Nobody's gonna do things the exact same way with the exact same outcome. It's just, you know, up to each crafter that does it. I, um, really this is the method that I pretty much started with, was this, and it, and it pretty much worked from the get-go on that. However, I watched a ton of YouTube videos on how to properly kind of wrap it so that your seams were tight together and how uh, how to put the tape on it and all that kind of stuff and the shrink wrap when I first did this I learned my lesson with the shrink wrap you got to make sure you heat it up enough so that it gets all those little bubbles out of it because if not those little bubbles are going to expand once you put it in your in your oven and you're gonna be looking at your tumbler and you're gonna hear this weird noise. You're gonna look and there's gonna be this huge bubble on the side of your tumbler where your shrink wrap is. And if there's a huge bubble, well, guess what? That means there's not pressure on the cup below because it's just air on top of it, which I mean, I guess there's pressure because it's air pressure from the bubble expanding, but you'd be better off uh, not having that. Also, you know, make sure whatever products you end up using if you shrink wrap that you test it out temperature-wise. Um, ask what the seller recommends for temperature. Trial and error is all you can do um, until, until you get your groove, basically. And that's gonna be pretty. I think I may end up keeping that one for myself. I ain't gonna lie. I designed that one with, well, I mean, I didn't make the actual art, but I did take three different pieces of art and put them together to make the tumbler design. And once again, these little bitty baby precision Cricut scissors are the absolute, I want to say bee's knees when it comes to stuff like this. one video where the girl had a technique to where it when she pulled her tape up boy it pulled everything up so she didn't have to sit here and do what I did I need to go back and find that one and work on taking less time to get the paper off because of all the little seam tapes okay so once I don't recall which one I put which tape on now <laughs> so that's how I roll but um, so I just want to show you the ink release. This is the ink release for this Summer Vibes one. Show you the cut. I'm going to pull my phone down here. Alright, so obviously, I mean, it has a pretty good ink release there. My black is nice. Really nice. So the first thing you want to look for on a successful tumbler is you want to look around the top edge to see if there's any like white smudges or just white in general or just it looks weak in color or fuzzy and that is good and then you want to do the same thing for the bottom to see if there's any white um fuzzy or anything like that and in which case i think i'm pretty damn good and the white fuzzy thing where the image doesn't transfer as well it's called ghosting by the way 
And the last thing you really want to look at, like for the main things is your seam, in which case this one was not a um, seamless pattern. I just kind of put it together like it was. So it's not too awful bad, like in regards to the fact that it wasn't supposed to flow naturally all the way. I'm not mad at that. There's no ghosting around it. That white right there is actually part of the design. I'm not mad at that at all. That's really pretty. And then, let's look at this one. This one, summer vibes. Black's nice. Doesn't look like it's turned brown where it got burnt or anything. It's really pretty, huh? And then, go around the top. And that looks pretty good. Sometimes it's hard to tell when you've got white in your image like that. Go around the bottom. Look. Mom looks pretty solid. And then your seam, which this one was not a seamless pattern. But I tried my best to sort of make it match up. But, I mean, it looks good to me in regards to how it comes together. No ghosting. Nice. And then that paper was this one. And it was good in release one and two. I feel like it wasn't as good as this one though. I'm not sure what what I did differently. Okay. We're going to the F bomb. Mom, well, there's the release. Looks good. The design looks good. Everything's black on there like it should be. This is really pretty. And then check the top. Thought there was one, but it was part of the design. And then we will check the bottom. I'm gonna turn this fan off now. Let's see, then we'll check the bottom. And that is part of the design. Now that looks like that is a defect on the cut, but I did not notice ahead of time, but that's okay. It's not bad. And then the seam, which this one I believe was a seamless pattern because of how well it went together. Um, it's almost like you can't even see it. I mean, there's the front and there's the seam. I mean, it's there. I, I got a little bit of ghosting right there. There's some ghosting, but it's not, it's kind of hidden in the pattern, so that's okay. And yeah, I got a little bit of ghosting, but I mean, it works out for this design because there's actually little white speckles, so it hides itself really well. But um, I would sell that one for full price because it's still a really good quality. All right, and here's my favorite one, Summer Vibes with the watermelon. And she had good ink release. Now, the only thing I can see on this one so far is that one seed turned out kind of brown. I'm not sure. That's weird. Just like the one seed turned brown. That's okay, though. It kind of, you know, some watermelon seeds are more brown than black. No problem. And then she's looks good. And then those, those are appropriate because they were underneath the bleaching. But let's look at the top. Let's see, top looks really good. And then let's look at the bottom. Bottom looks good. And then this one, I believe this one was seamless. And I mean, they matched up in slight, a little bit of ghosting right there, no big deal. But otherwise, it's pretty daggum good. I am excited. Um, let's see, line them up here. And one last look at them, and then there you go. I don't know why that one's moving so weird. 
There it is, folks.